Here's a world that reacts to mouse events. When I click, a small dot appears on the screen. I can click again and another one appears. And I can click again, a third one appears. But we only ever have three dots. When I click a third time, one of them disappears. I can click again. We keep three dots on the screen at all times. In this lecture, you're going to build exactly this animation. Here we have the key data definitions for making this animation. And even more points contains 0, 1, 2, or 3 points. It's like a couple of points which you've seen before, but it can handle even more. We also see the point data definition, which includes two numbers, x and y coordinates. Here are four examples of even more points. We've got one with 0 points, one with 1 point, one with 2 points, and one with 3 points. Key things that you'll need to do are add to these and draw them on the screen. To help you with this assignment and also with the midterm, I'm going to build a similar animation with up to two points using the union data definition called a couple of points that you've seen before. But to understand how to design functions involving unions, first we have to understand structures. Two weeks ago, y'all learned about structures. A structure is a way to package up things like the name of a person and the age of a person into one thing, a person. We can also package up the X coordinate and the Y coordinate of a point into a single point. We could use a person as a world in the Big Bang animation if we want to show perhaps a person growing up. We could also use a point as the world in a Big Bang animation that uh, shows a point following a mouse around the street. Now, um, the important part that you saw two weeks ago of designing functions that deal with structures is writing the template for processing a structure. So just to review, the template for processing a structure should take apart the structure and make an inventory of all the fields of the structure because we might want to use any of them any number of times. For example, for processing a person, we better remind ourselves that we have a string, which is the name of a person. We better remind ourselves that we have an age, which is a number. We better remind ourselves that uh, when processing a point, there's an X coordinate and a Y coordinate, which are each a number. And that's the basic part of making a template that processes a structure like a point. And once we've made this template, typically we could use the same template for writing all sorts of functions that take a point or a person as input. And whenever we want to write a function that takes a point as input, for example, like drawing a point or moving a point up, or changing a point or whatever, we would have to copy the template and rename the name of a function from process point to draw point or move point or what have you. Now, last week, you learned about unions. Unions are another kind of data definition. For example, a maybe point is a union because it has multiple possibilities. A maybe point could be either made like this using make none, that's a structure, or made like this using make point. Points are another structure that you just saw. So these are both structures, but if you know that you have a maybe point, you don't really know whether it's a noun or a point. And that's useful because, for example, we wanted to have a Big Bang animation where sometimes there is no point and sometimes there is a point. And that's where we want the world of the Big Bang animation to be a maybe point. And in order to build that animation, we have to design multiple functions that process a maybe point. And for that, we have to write a template for processing a maybe point. The template for processing a union, for example, the template here for processing a maybe point, looks 
a little bit like the template for processing a structure, and also a little bit like the template for processing an enumeration. The part that looks like an enumeration template is the count, because the data definition says one of with two possibilities. The template should have count with two clauses, two cases. In each case, we're saying what if the maybe point is actually made this way, or what if the maybe point is actually made this way. That's a part that looks like an enumeration template because the enumeration template is also where we have multiple possibilities for what a thing could be. But once we know that something is a none, we should think about what the none contains. Here it doesn't contain anything. We should also think about if the thing is a point, what the point contains. Well, a point always contains two things. So the part of this uh, union template that looks like a structure processing template is when we know we have a certain kind of structure because then we better take that structure apart and remind ourselves what are the parts. Okay, the parts are an X and a Y and those are two numbers. So now using this complete template, we can write many functions that process a maybe point, like drawing a maybe point or moving a maybe point up or changing a maybe point and so on. And that's how we would build a Big Bang animation where sometimes there's no point, sometimes there's a point. So what if you want to have a animation where there are sometimes two points? Here's the data definition for a couple of points. There are three possibilities because a couple of points could actually consist of no point or one point or two points. Just to familiarize ourselves with this data definition, it's a good idea to write some examples of data, examples of what a couple of points could be. And examples of data can also be useful when we write examples of functions we design later on. Let's start with a couple points that doesn't actually contain any point. We could just copy this part of the data definition and call that a data example. Let's write another example of a couple points. This time, let's copy a different part of the data definition. And this time, we cannot just put it into a definition and call that a data example because the Data definition actually tells us we have to fill it in. We have to fill in a point. So we have to remind ourselves what's a point. Well, we have a data definition for what a point is. So let me copy that and use that data definition for what a point is to fill in the data example for a couple points that I'm currently working on. But we're not done yet because that data definition tells us we need some numbers. So let's make up some numbers, like maybe 50, maybe, I don't know, 100. Now we're done. Now we have a complete example of a couple of points. Let's do at least one more example. This time, let's use this third case of what a couple of points could be. So again, we're going to copy it from the data definition. But we're not done because we need to fill in these points. How can we make a point? Well, that's what the data definition of a point is supposed to tell us. So let's remind ourselves that this is how to make a point and there's only one way to make a point. So I'm just going to copy that. There's no choice there. And then put it back into the data example that we're working on. So how can we make a point? Ah, now we need to fill in some numbers. Let's pick some numbers like 30. Let's pick some numbers like 80. Oh, we still need to fill in a point. So how do we make a point? Here's how we make a point. That's based on the data definition for a point. And now I need to make some numbers again. Maybe I'll pick 50 this time. Mm, what number should I pick? Let me pick 100. Let's define another example of a couple points. Now you see how a couple points can be used to store no point or one point or two points. And just now, I noticed that the gray highlighting automatically produced by Dr. Racket does not match what I expect 
So I was expecting that I finished the whole definition, but when I click at the end of my definition, the gray highlighting does not extend all the way to include the word define. So I'm missing a right parenthesis. Now I'm good. And similarly here, I'm missing a right parenthesis. And here, ah, uh, look, I'm also missing a right parenthesis. Okay, so these are some data examples of what a couple of points could be. That's one important thing to write whenever you see a complex data definition. Write some examples of that data definition. Next, let's work on the template for a function that processes a couple of points. So we could call this template by convention process couple of points. And the idea is that we don't really know what function we might uh, design yet, but we're going to have functions that take a couple of points as input and produce whatever is output. We don't know, we don't care yet. And already we could write this template. Let me call the input couple of points CP for short. And now let's take a look at the data definition. The data definition says one of, so I need to have a com. The data definition has one of three cases, so my count better have three cases. And each case is going to include a question and an answer, like this. But I'm not done yet, because I first need to fill in the questions. I have three questions to fill in, and each question should be something that allows the computer to tell whether we have this kind of a couple of points, or this kind of a couple of points, or this kind of a couple of points. How can we tell if we have this kind of a couple of points? Well, when we define this structure here called num, one of the currency functions we got, one of the two currency functions we got, was called num ha, or num question mark. And that's a function we can use here to tell if cp is made using make num. And similarly, one of the three currency functions we got in our define struct one is one huh? and that we can use to tell if we have a make one kind of couple of points. And this structure definition gave us four currency functions, one of which is two huh? so we're going to use that to tell if we have one of these kind of couple of points. But we're not quite done yet. This will be okay if we're working with enumeration, but we have a union, which is a little bit more. A one can contain a point. A two contains two points. So as part of our template, we should take inventory of these fields of structures. If we know we have a one, then we better remind ourselves that a one has a first. That's the field here, so we better take it out and maybe use it. Similarly, a two has a first and a second, so let's take them out and maybe use them. But we're not done yet, because remember, the one first of a couple of points is a point. That's what the data definition tells us. And a point is not like a simple atomic thing, like a string or a number, it's got its own parts. So let's refer to the template for processing a point inside the template for processing a couple points because the data definition for a point is used inside the data definition for a couple points in the corresponding place. So because a couple of points uses point here, process a couple of points uses process point here. But that's not the only place where a couple of points use another structure. Here are two more places where a couple of points uses a point. So let's also put a reference to process point in the corresponding part of process couple of points. Now we're done with the template for processing a couple of points. And this is a template that we will use shortly to make any number of functions that process a couple of points.